Today I'm going to do something a little bit different because I found this beautiful spot on this lake near where we're staying that's got this really nice arrangement of islands and then reflections of those islands and then when the sun goes down it just lights up all the trees in a beautiful way. So I'm going to try and get a shot with this drone. I've just got to announce my new photography course bundle for composition made easy. I've bundled together all three courses and now it's on sale but only for seven days. There's a link in the description. And I'm going to try a slightly different approach. I'm going to put like a little body cam on as well as this and as well as another camera and just see if I can film the actual drone remote so you can see me working in real time and composing this shot. So. We'll see if it works, but before I can do that, uh, we've got a bit of a problem. What is it? Flying ants. Flying ants. Yeah, yeah, sorry about this. Yeah, we're just trying to get outside, but uh, we can't find the door handle. Can you help us out? And this is a funny thing when people say, oh, I love nature. I just love being out in nature. Well, yeah, but sometimes nature kind of uh, takes over and reminds yeah. you, oh, one in the bed? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, it's one on your pillow. That's on, on me now, thanks. Yeah, sorry. I think we'll be sleeping in the camper tonight because there's a bit too much nature going on. <laughs> Talking of nature, last night I could hear wolves howling just around sunset on the other side of the lake there. Kind of interesting. Oh, look. Look at this. We've got lots more now. Uh, yeah, we still can't figure out where the door handle is. You know, we, we've asked nicely. Now, please don't get the vacuum cleaner. No! Oh, God, no, no! Think of the children! Oh, you bastards! Well, the problem now is you can see them all dying inside the... In the back there, that's kind of sad. If you know what kind of ants these are, just let me know. Please, please don't get the vacuum cleaner out again. That was Uncle Brian. Ah, <sighs> the nature. The nature. They're not bloodsuckers, they're all right. They're just kind of clumsy and stupid. They kind of bash into them, like, oh, sorry. It's the ones outside that are the problem. So I'm gonna have to, I've got my uh, midge net, <clears throat> which I bought from a fishing store in Oban in Scotland. Nothing is getting through that. And then I've got my, uh, my Valerie photographer's gloves. Uh, so that all that's gonna be exposed is my thumbs my four fingers and even then the bastards get on your fingers the mosquitoes they'll, they'll get on your fingers and bite your fingertips just for that little bit of blood the most shameful uh, part of apparatus is that i am wearing appropriate footwear but have a look at this hard to put socks on anyway i'll give it a little bit longer then i'll head out by that time there should be about six thousand flying ants in the windowsill <laughs> Great though, nature, and the nature. Eat them, Leo. Well, Leo did actually give one a try, but <laughs> I don't think he liked it very much. Did you, Leo? Huh? What do you think to these uh, these flying ants, Leo? Crunchy. No, I think it's about time to uh, get out there. The light looks pretty good, so I'm gonna brave the blood sucking bugs. Go outside, put my gear on. Oh, there's one on the bed. Yeah, yeah, I'm just trying to get to work, but yeah, I can't find my toolbox. Put my midge net on. And, uh... You have a bug inside it. Oh, God. One of these? Yeah. That would have been fun, wouldn't it? Chewing on my head. How do you know? How could you see that? Is it gone? Thanks. Were you just winding me up? No, I did see one. Oh, there it is. Look at that. Yeah, sorry. I, I would have had that with me. Sorry, I'm leaving now. Get off, you bugger. Yeah, I'm gone now. Sorry. She's <laughs> chewing on me, chewing on me ear. What's that? That would have been very pleasant. Right, so this is me, me image net. So you won't probably won't see my face now until I uh, pull this off. So I, I can't actually see anything. There we go. Oh, oh God. In theory, I'm bulletproof, and only mosquitoes will will get me. So we'll see. Thank you. I shall take this outside and. Uh, yeah. Sorry. Oh, ah, oh, like a medieval knight of old, he faces the danger of the nature. I've got my camera rigged up here. So what I'm going to do, I'm, and I can't even see if I'm in the frame here because this is blinded. So I'm going to try and film myself with this, and then I'm going to have the drone remote shoved in front of that camera. 
filming that. So that, that's the plan. Let's let's see if it works. Uh, two bars, typical. Shove this mustard in. Okay, let's get this all tucked in. I think we're good. Now I only just got my hands on this drone, so if you're a bit of a, a drone snob, you know, bear with me. You know, this is really a, a demonstration about composition. That's what I'm going to try and show you is composition. The actual using of the drone, well, I'm still figuring it out, so uh, bear with me, you know. Not that I'm a drone expert, but one thing I prefer when I'm doing drone photography is I prefer to shoot, not in this direction, which is directly into the sun, I prefer to flip it around and shoot in the opposite direction, because bosh, look at all that beautiful colour. Let's just pull that down, we'll pull back a bit, and I'll just drop the elevation a smidge. I mean, that doesn't just apply to drone photography, it also applies to, to landscape photography, well, even portrait photography. I just like that light with the sun behind the camera. Oh, I should be recording video, shouldn't I? Let me just record some video here. Yeah, that's being a bit stupid. Oh, look at, let's put it in, let's put it in cine mode here. Let's get, get a little bit lower. Oh, oh, that's Bobby Dazzler, is that? So one of the things that I want to talk about, just, just move this up here is subject separation. And this is something that I cover in, I think it's chapter two of my Composition Made Easy course. And basically what I talk about there, and I'll demonstrate it here, is how I like to sort of prioritize my subjects, how they interrupt one another and how you can separate them. And, and you do that by positioning yourself. Well, nothing's better or easier than positioning yourself with a drone. It's just, you can put yourself anywhere you want in space. So looking at this composition, what you may notice, and I've got a weird shaped finger here with this glove. So what I like is this arrangement of islands and peninsulas and the way that they're reflected in the water. And down here, hopefully you can just see it, is this really lovely reflection of those trees. So in order to reveal a bit more of that, I've got to get lower. So let's just drop the drone a little bit. So what I'll do, I'll put it in normal mode because it's so slow on this that you can't really notice it. There you go, you should be able to notice that. So now you should be able to see, <clears throat> I'll just nudge this over here. If you look carefully, you should be able to see because I got lower, it revealed more of that reflection of the treetops there. Now I'm just gonna get a smidge closer as well. So if I get a little bit closer, you may also notice that I got a little bit more space, a little bit more separation between the reflection of that treetop there and this tree here. So if I, if I nudge the drone over to the left, you know, that's nice but I don't like that interruption. So that's why I call this subject separation. To me, the reflection of those treetops there is quite important. I want everything to sit in the right place, ideally. I mean, often you can't because it's nature, the nature. So to separate those two subjects, that, that tree that you can see in the foreground and the uh, reflected treetops, I just simply have to move over to my right. Oh, I can feel a mozzie on my face. Oh. Oh, <clears throat> right, okay, I think I got it. So now you should be able to see this lovely bit of space there. I've got better subject separation, but I'm also paying attention to other elements. So if you look here, you might just be able to see it here. There's a treetop here in this sort of um, central peninsula that is just kind of chipping into that island in the distance. And it's not really too much of a problem. I, I can totally live with it. However, if I just nudge the drone up a little bit just get a little bit more elevation there you go there we've got nicer subject separation and i've been able to separate that peninsula from the foreground that's in front of it and that island that's in the background and that is what i'm talking about when it comes to subject separation so let's get a little bit closer and see what that does to this composition so I kind of like this, by moving forward, I've eliminated that whole sort of section of foreground and I've filled the, the foreground with that sort of peninsula there, which is kind of nice, but I'm, I'm sort of missing it. So let's move back, bring it back and bring back those reflexions. Oh yeah, that is gorgeous. And if I move further back, the reflections of those treetops do get bigger, but then you've got that bisection again of that island. So you have to kind of choose 
what you want to live with but I, i'm quite happy with that so what i'm hoping for today is some color in those clouds and of course as you can see you see all this lovely light that's hitting these treetops here i really want that just before the sun goes down because it's really got i did some shooting last night it's got this beautiful orange glow to it but what i'd really love is if the clouds in the sky light up if they get a bit of texture a bit of contrast they will reflect in this lake here like a like a mirror and then you'll get that added dimension that added bit of contrast and color so i'm just gonna hang around here for a little bit longer maybe i'll fly the drone for you and just sort of entertain you for a few minutes while we wait for that light to come and hopefully the light will give me if not a killer shot pretty good filler shot Well, I had a few sketchy moments there where I lost contact with the aircraft, but it, it found its way home. Been pretty good so far with that, uh, but these batteries are completely flaccid. So I'm gonna put these on charge, and if this shot turns out to be any good, here's the shot. this video helpful please hit the old like button subscribe to the channel and don't forget to tickle my bell thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one